Hi everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, that's good afternoon from where I am. Um, it might be morning where you are, it might be afternoon, maybe evening. All the same good day to you everybody. Just touching base with you guys again, trying to encourage us in the world. Um, I think it's becoming more and more enjoyable for me to, to do this as God creates the opportunity. Based on what uh, one talked about yesterday, um, I was studying this morning and as a follow up to that, um, I think it's pertinent that one explains a little bit more in light of what we said yesterday. If you permit, let's jump quickly into the word. Now, um, I think the best thing is, uh, let, let's go into Matthew chapter 14 verse 22. Basically, we're going to be talking about um, Jesus when he walked on the sea and tie it with what we did yesterday or what I talked about yesterday about entering the rest, hearing the word and being at rest. Now it says, I'm reading from the King James anyway. It says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. For the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Praise God. This story is repeated in Mark chapter 6 from verse 45 down and John chapter 6 from verse 15 down. Now, I want us to pay particular attention to words because God doesn't waste words when he puts it in scripture. Particular attention to words that were said there. Jesus went somewhere, sent away his disciples somewhere else and the disciples were to come back and pick him up. But in between where he sent them, he gave them a word, go and do this. When they were trying to come back, like in the case where he said, let's cross over to the other side. A storm set in, turbulence came in. We could look at that as turbulence in the spirit realm. Turbulence in anything we're doing. We've been given an assignment, we've been given a word. Then suddenly turbulence. Now, Jesus is supposed to be our example. We're to look at what he did and how he handled situations. And that's how we're to order our own lives. Now, what did Jesus do in the midst of that storm? The disciples couldn't get to him. They tried rowing to him, but they couldn't get to him. The storm was furious. What he did was he stepped out on the water and walked. Now, he showed that it was not just him alone that had the prerogative of walking. That if he gave a word, anybody could do the same thing. When Peter saw him, Peter was scared, thinking he was a spirit. But he now asked that if, he, if it's truly you, Lord, ask me to come. In essence, Lord, give me a word, a direction for my life. And this was given to him. And he said, come. Now, note pertinent things here. When Jesus was walking or when Jesus walked, Jesus did not bother with the storm or the turbulence. He just walked, knowing that that could not deter him. He walked on the waves, even though there was turbulence, even though there was, there, there was a storm. The same thing happened with Peter. He didn't stop the storm for Peter to walk. He just said, come. In essence, don't bother yourself with what is happening around. Just pay attention to what I've said. Now, when did Peter start sinking? Peter started sinking when he started paying attention to the waves, when he saw the waves boisterous. Then he started sinking. It's the same thing, the disciples in the ship yesterday, 
They feared for their lives, despite the fact that Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. Now, think about this in this other way. Let's assume Jesus had calmed the storm before he told Peter to come. Does that make water more walkable upon? Would, would that have prevented Peter from sinking? Not really. He, he, uh, Peter didn't walk on, on the water because it was uh, turbulent. He walked on the water because Jesus said, come. Praise God. I, I hope I'm communicating something. In essence, as long as there is a word, he's telling us that that word is sufficient to create buoyancy, irrespective of what is happening around. In essence, you are not to pay any attention. Like I said yesterday concerning Jesus and Jairus and his daughter, you overhear the negative things, the turbulence, the, this, the, the noise around and ignore it. Don't pay attention to it. You just you are focused on what has been said by God, either from his word or from his spirit to you. It has enough ample ability to bring itself to pass. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's, it's exciting to me. I just said I, I should share this. If you are going through, if you, if, if you have a word now and there's turbulence around, don't bother yourself about it. It's expected. The aim is, the enemy is there to try to steal that word from you, steal your attention away from the word, for you to cast doubts on the ability of God. You remember what he told Eve? He said, had God really said, he wants you to have doubts whether God actually said. It's not, it's not you he's after, he's after God. He wants to, to, to try and get God in a position where he can say you failed. You see, the people you put your, your, your love upon, they wasted, their, wasted that love. Don't succumb to that uh, trick of the enemy. It's, it's, it's just a trick. It's a gimmick. If you walk without paying attention to what is going on around, instead you pay attention solely to what God has said, you definitely will walk on water. Praise God. Hallelujah. See you tomorrow by His grace.